Uh, the video will be made available uh, on YouTube. Uh, when the next abstract is sent out, the link to the recorded video will be put there so that you're able to watch the video at your own time. Uh, if you saw the other abstract which was sent out for this one, there's already a link for last week's uh, video there. Uh, the other thing which I've done is I have created a shared folder in Google Drive. As you can see, there is this uh, person icon there. So the link to this folder is also in the abstract. So as long as you've got the abstract, you don't have to worry about where you can get. Just use the link, uh, put it in your browser, then you download the folder, then stuff will be there. Then you can look at your things on your own. Okay. So I'll open the folder, proceed, it's on my Google Drive. Okay, so there we are. So for today, we are looking at this bit here. So I'll right click, then I'll open with, then we're using this platform called uh, Google Collaboratory. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to encourage uh, people to work together. So if you're working on a particular research with someone and you're working on a computational aspect, then you've shared that particular file with them. They will be able to see what you're doing. They'll also be able to add their own codes and you'll be able to do the same thing. So you'll be able to see how things are working out. Uh, with this collab, so we're going to run our Python, our Python codes through the browser. We are going to be using uh, online computers, which Python computers which are being provided by Google. So the next thing you do is you click on this uh, connect icon here. So you do that. Uh, take a few minutes, a few seconds actually. So Google will proceed to allocate us disk space and also RAM for us to actually run our codes. Okay, so we've been connected. So as you can see, uh, that's how much RAM we have been uh, given and there's also the bit there okay so i'll proceed okay. now uh a bed's eye view of built-in data structures for python programming now the good thing about python is that out of the box as you saw last week python already comes with these bits of codes which you can already use we looked at print we looked at other functions like uh, like string, int, and all those things we looked at last week. But there's even more. There's even data structures which you can use to store more data, several data. And that's basically what we're going to look at. So basically, our objectives in this series is to show how you can create these data structures, what are they, how you can access items from these structures, how you can find out the size of the structure, how you can change the values you have stored in these data structures, uh, how you can add uh, items, how you can modify their values, how you can remove stuff from these data structures, and lastly but not least, of course, how you can delete the same data structures. Now, uh, Python comes with four of these data structures, which are the most useful, really, which are what people use. There are also other smaller data structures which are available, which people don't use quite a lot, but we want to focus only on these four. These are what are called lists, uh, tuples, sets, and dictionaries. They have their own unique characteristics, and during the course of this lecture, I'll try to point out these things and show you how these things are created. Uh, when you're using this particular piece of software, you can see there's this arrow here. So basically, this means that you can, this one has been collapsed, so you can expand it, so you just click there. And of course, when I click there, certain things show up. Uh, then here, there's this arrow here. So I click that. And this is now what I have here. Uh, so I'll start with lists. How do you create a list and what is a list? So basically, a list is a collection of items. Uh, these items are mutable, which means that you can change these particular items. And also there's order. The position of an item in a list matters. So you have the first item, second item, third item, last item, second last item. So there is order and also these things can be changed. That's basically what a list is. Uh, the items in the list, you are enclosed in square brackets and the actual items in the list are separated from each other using commas. 
uh, since it's a collection of items, a list can actually be stored in a variable. So how? Are we, yes. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, I haven't shared the other one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> let, let me share the other bit. I didn't. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry. All right, so so the first list which you want to create in this particular case, this is a list of fruits, and the items I want to put in this list are mango, guava, orange, grape, lemon, cucumber, and orange. So basically, how do I do that? So I will store this list in a variable called fruits, then the list itself, I create it using these square brackets, then the items are these ones which I have here. So you have mango there, you have guava, orange, grape, lemon, cucumber, and orange. And as you can see, these items are actually strings because I've enclosed them in quotation marks, which is what we had last week. So basically, this is how you go about creating the list. The actual list is this bit, this side here, in square brackets, and the things which are separated by commas, those are the items. Then we proceed to right away store the list in this particular variable, fruit. So I'll run that code. So it runs, uh, okay. Then next, I'll try to see if I've, I've been successful with creating this particular list, so run this print, so I'll print to fruits, and you can see that I've actually managed to create this particular list there. If I ask Python using the type function here, what kind of structure I have created, if I run this bit here, type fruits, you see that Python actually tells you to say what you've created is a list. Why do you have orange twice? Why do you have orange twice? I have orange twice to deliberately show that in a list, a, a list has got a characteristic where an item can appear multiple times. There are other data structures which do not allow you, for example, a set. It doesn't allow an item to appear multiple times. So this is just a deliberate to show the different features as I'm going about. Thank you for noticing that. Okay. So that's basically how you go about creating a list. So you use square brackets, then you put your items uh, separated by commas. The items you have in a you can have in a list are not just restricted to strings. You can actually have numbers. Since we science people, we're physics people, we use numbers. So you could actually have numbers in there and it will still be able to work. You can also create what is referred to as a list of lists, which is basically a list which contains other lists, which is also very possible. So in this case, I create a list called meats, which contains items beef, pork, mutton, venison, chicken. So I proceed to do that. There, so it runs. I also create a list called vegetables here. So it contains rape, cabbage, lettuce, spinach, and tomatoes. Then I also create a list called cereals, which contains corn, wheat, oats, barley, millet, and sorghum. Then from these three lists, in with the other one I've already created, now I use these lists. I create a list called foods. But the items in this particular list are actually lists themselves. So this is a structure which is referred to as a list of lists. But still more, uh, if I print it, have I succeeded in creating this particular structure? Yes, you can see that. So basically you can see the first one here, which are the fruits, up to there, then comes the beef, uh, the, the, the beef items, then comes the rib, uh, then the corn, like that. So this bit here is gone. Then, uh, if I check what kind of thing monster I've created or data structure, Python says well, you have, this is also a list because everything is included is enclosed in square brackets. So you, this allows you, in a way, a list of lists gives you a way of storing multiple lists of that you might have uh, columns of information so those columns of data you can actually store the, each column you can store it in a list then these columns you proceed to store them in one particular list and you can proceed like that so basically that would be the equivalent of you basically storing data which is an excel sheet so you could do that the other structure uh, which we want to look at is something called a tuple now a tuple is exactly like a list the only difference with the tuple is that you are not allowed to change the items. You are not allowed to delete anything from a tuple. So if this is a list you create, 
but you're not allowed to delete anything from a tuple. You're not allowed to modify the items in the tuple. So that's the difference with this data structure. Okay, so how do we create this? Basically, we use uh, parentheses to enclose the data. Then the items inside the tuple, you separate them from each other using commas. And of course, you can store a tuple in a variable like everything else. So here, I want to create a tuple which is going to have these prime numbers. Uh, one, two, three. Of course, there's five repeated twice there. Then I'll store this whole thing in the variable prime numbers. So basically, this is me creating this particular data structure. Then I print it out here. There. So as you can see, uh, the five is appearing twice there. But there's a difference in this particular case. If I asked Python what kind of structure I have created, it tells me that th this is a tuple. As you will see later on, you cannot modify a tuple, but of course you can get rid of it. Then now comes something called a set. Excuse me, Mr. Citronic. Yes. So when it is in uh, that parenthesis, it automatically means that it is a tuple. It is a tuple, yes. And then when you say we cannot delete it, that means in that first one, if I delete five, it will not appear. It will, re it will refuse to delete. <laughs> yes, that's what we mean. It will refuse to delete the five. But you can get rid of it. You can get rid of the whole thing, but inside the items inside, mm -hmm. you can't modify them. Mm -hmm. Even if you modify them, it won't appear in that. You can't even modify it, right? You can't modify the items inside. You can add stuff to the tuple, but oh. once things have been added to a tuple, mm -hmm. you can't modify it. It will not it will refuse to basically uh, this has got its own uses. For example, if you are you have got a function which has to it does its things, then it has to give you back the results mm -hmm. and different pieces of results. So basically, we tend to present the results as a tuple. Mm -hmm. The reason is because probably you are using a computer which is a remote computer somewhere in Europe or in the US, mm -hmm. but you're working from here. Mm -hmm. So as the information is being sent from there to here, you don't want that particular information to be modified in any way. So basically, we use tuples for that particular purpose. One of the things we use them for. Uh, then there's a set. Now, in a set, uh, there are a couple of things. The idea of position does not exist in a set. So you can't say first item in a set, second item. It doesn't exist. So basically, sets, position doesn't exist. Then there's no order. So they are disordered, and an item can only appear once in a set. Only once. So as you're going to see, there are a number of ways you can create a set. For example, you can start out with only your curly brackets, like this one here. So I can say, uh, I start with this curly bracket here, and this curly bracket here. I'm trying to create a set called SADIC, which is made up of uh, member countries of the SADIC community. You will notice I have uh, Zambia here, and Zambia there appearing twice. But when I create this set, despite Zambia being appearing twice, in the final product, Zambia is only going to appear once. Yes. So I do that. Uh, Sadiq. I print the set Sadiq there. So when I print the set Sadiq, and you, you see how I created it. I started with Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Zambia. When I get the actual product, things have been Disorder. Disordered, yes. So basically, sets by their nature are disordered and position doesn't exist. Then apart from that, an item can only appear once. So if you look through this list, we had Zambia appearing once, but you realize that Zambia is appearing uh, twice yeah, when we twice. created it, but now Zambia is only appearing once at the end. So sets have got this characteristic. There is disorder, there is no position, and an item can only appear once. As the name suggests, you can use this for set mathematics, finding intersections, unions, doing that, all these set operations, you can actually do this and um, that's what they're used for. So if I check out the data type for SADIC, it tells me that this is a set. There's another way you can create sets and that is if you use a list. So the items which you have in a, like the, like the ones I have here, I can actually use a list and give this list, or I can use a tuple, then give this tuple to a function called set. So first here, I create a list called Comesa. So these are the Comesa countries. Uh, there's Zambia, 
again deliberately now it's appearing as you can see here here there it's appearing four times in this particular list so lists have got no problem with an item appearing multiple times and of course when you print out this list you will see that it will look exactly the way we created it so there is order in lists Burundi, Comoros, Zambia you see the order in which things were typed and that's how things appear there like that so there is that distinction there. Uh, if I check the data type of Comesa right now, it's a list. Okay? But I can use this list. I can give this list to a function called set. So there is a built-in function in Python called set. This function set, you can use it to create sets from lists and other things like tuples. So I give it uh, Comesa. So basically what's happening here is that the function set is going to look at this list Comesa. It will create a copy of whatever is there of this list then it will modify that copy into a set then after doing that it will save it back into the variable commerce because these are variables so our variable was previously was storing a list now it's going to store a set so that's how you do that operation then if you type uh, what you have in commerce now now you see that you have this list a, a set in commerce then if you print out, you make a printout of Comesa, this is what you have. You have something totally different. And of course, as you can see, Zambia only appears once instead of four times. Like that. So this is a feature of sets. Uh, okay, is this yes. coming the same order that is in the set? The order here yeah. is different from the order here, yeah. from the list. Um, so that yeah. means when you are creating a set from a set, again the order is... No, no, no. You create a set from a list or from a tuple or from just a... from this collection of items in, a, in curly brackets. Mm. So does this mean the content in the set can be modified? The content in a set can... No, you, you can modify things from a set. You can remove things from a set. The only issue is you can't refer to position because there is no order uh item will only appear once but for a set you can add things you can remove things so you can mod make modifications to a set so remember just uh, a quick one also yes. i see that for these things it's much easier to ask how you are you are presenting rather than at the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so maybe Two questions. Yes. So you created the commercial list. Yes. A commercial list. Yes. Yes. And then you have um, a, a commercial set. A commercial set. So yes. does it mean that um, when you create the set, it means the, the list has been destroyed or it's kept? Yes. Uh, the list has been destroyed. because the list is the a, is a value. Using the same variable. I'm using the same variable commercial. So the, so the list is what's stored in the commercial. Mm -hmm. So when I when I copy the commesa list then i create a set then i store it back into the variable commesa then the list gets overwritten so basically it gets oh. destroyed oh. so now what you end up having is the the, the, the set value okay yes. then going forward uh, how do you now um, um get any of those uh, I, I want to call, it, call them arrays Okay, they, they seem like they are arrays. So how can you get, say, Zambia in a commercial set? How can you get Zambia in a commercial set? Yes. That's an item we're going to look at, which is accessing items that are structured. Oh, so it's coming down. Yes, okay, it's coming down. Okay, yes. So now I'm just looking at uh, creation of sets. You can also use a tuple. As much as things can't be modified, for example, I, don't, I think there is stuff which won't be modified. For example, I've created a tuple here called... Uh, Great Lakes region. There are these countries sharing Victoria Lake, and I think they are not going to change very much, probably. But you've got, uh, I think, is it Victoria or Tanganyika? They're sharing. Why they call themselves Great Lakes? But you've got DRC Congo, you've got Uganda, you've got Burundi, you've got Rwanda. That's what I could. Yes, like Tanganyika. That's what I could find on the internet. Mm. So this, as you can see, uh, this is a tuple because I'm using parentheses. So I store this tuple in the variable Great Lakes region. Um, I print out. Uh, the tuple, as you can see, it has been created nicely. I check the data type of the tuple. 
this particular variable, it says tuple. So I now get this tuple, I give it to the function set. This is one thing you'll notice about some, I'm, I'm calling it a function, about Python functions. A function might be able to accept different kinds of data. The same set function, I gave it a list, it proceeded to work. Now I'm giving it something called a tuple. It's still going to work. So basically, again, what's going to do here is the function set will look in this variable, Great Lakes region, see what's there. It will make a copy, then proceed to modify this copy into a set and store back the value in the, this variable like that. So when I make a printout here, uh, that's what I get. So now I get this bit here, Great Lakes region, like that. Again, you notice the order in which things are. I started with Congo DR, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda. What I get from my set is I start with Burundi, Uganda, Rwanda, Congo is at the end. So how you put things in the set and how they're going to appear is completely unrelated in this particular case. There's this, whole, there's this disorder which you have there. Of course, and I, I check the type, so I have a set there. Uh, the fourth data structure we're going to look at is a bit different, but it's going to make a lot of sense. These are what are called dictionaries. Now, a dictionary works the same way your normal dictionary works. You have a key, and there's a value associated with that particular dictionary. So for example, if you open a dictionary and you want to check out what the word welcome means, so you have to open a dictionary to where the debris are, then until you find the word welcome, you find it, then there's something written about welcome there. So basically, the welcome is the key. Then once you find the key, there is a value associated with that key. And basically, that's how this structure works. So it works on a key value basis instead of just values like that. But of course, uh, it's similar to, it shares certain properties. Because the dictionary also has uh, these, these parentheses, these curly brackets, which a set has. A set has got curly brackets. A dictionary also has got curly brackets. Now the thing about a set is that an item can only appear once. A similar thing with a dictionary. A word in a dictionary can only appear once. A key, welcome, only appears somewhere then there is an explanation of what welcome does. Okay? So the keys you're going to use in your dictionary can only open one door. The same way you have a key to this particular door. There's only one key which opens this particular thing. The key to this door, you can't use it to open Professor Manyala's office. So we have got a key, one key, which works with one door. So that's basically what you have. So basically the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to create a dictionary called weekdays. Now in this dictionary called weekdays, I have got numbers as keys. One, so I'm associating the number one with Sunday. So I'm saying the first day of the week is Sunday. The second day of the week is Monday. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. That's the information I'm trying to present here. So I am mapping the value one, which is the key, uh, to the sorry the key one to the value Sunday. I am mapping the key two to the value Monday. I'm mapping three to Tuesday. I'm mapping four to Wednesday. I'm mapping five to Thursday. I'm mapping six to Saturday. So basically, this combination which you have here, this is what is referred to as a key value pair. The one is the key. Then you have a colon. Then what comes after that is the value which is basically Sunday. Uh, so I'll do that. So I make a printout of this. And this is what I get. So one Sunday, uh, two Monday, uh, three Tuesday, Wednesday, like that, a bit like that. And if I check the data type, it tells me that this is dict, which is short for dictionary. So basically, that's how dictionaries work. Instead of just using commas and everything you've got these key value associations okay there's also another dictionary which i will create which is dictionary of capital cities so i've got zambia i'm being mapped to Osaka, angola being mapped to rwanda namibia to window Botswana to gaboron zimbabwe to harare south africa being mapped to pretoria mozambique being mapped to maputo malawi being mapped to Nilongwe, tanzania being mapped to dodoma so basically you can see now that the name of the country is the key and the capital city of the country is the value in this particular thing, and this is what I call, I proceed to call this structure called capitals. If I print out that bit there, that's what I'm going to get, so I get that. You can see order in this particular case is a bit important, but an item can only appear, a uh, key value pair 
can only appear once you check that's what i have there so basically that's how you create your lists you create your tuple your your sets and your dictionaries any questions on this can you modify a list you can modify a list yes you can also modify a dictionary you can also modify a set Yes. Is it possible to modify a set that has been created from a tuple? Is it possible to modify a set that has been created from a tuple? Uh, Could you say yes, 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 yes. You can modify a set created from a tuple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this, yes. Can you also associate with definitions to some? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can say Zambia, then you can, oh, you can do whatever it is you want. Yes, you can do that. Okay. Uh, yes, one more question. Yes. Um, so, for these um, dictionaries that you have created, the one form has got just maybe a number and a weekday. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also have uh, lists as values for dictionaries. Okay, okay, yeah. but my, my, my concern is um, for this one we have printed now, mm -hmm. we have variable to variable. But no, 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 we don't have variable to variable. But Zambia you have, you have in a quotation mark. That's a string. It's a string value. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but then the other one has a number one yeah. or two or three. Yeah. So, so when, it comes to, when it comes to keys, you can use numbers as keys. You actually can not. You can use integers as keys. Mm -hmm. You can also use strings as keys. Mm -hmm. Then, when it comes to values, you can use anything as a value. You can use numbers, integers, uh, booleans, lists, dictionaries, tuples, sets. You can use all those as values. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand that, uh, but I just wanted to be clear also on this part, for especially for these capitals. Mm -hmm. So Zambia is a string, yes. and um, you are saying Lusaka is just a string also. It's yes, it's also a string. Yes, it's not is a it variable. No, it's not a variable. Variables are black. They're labeled. They're given a black value, a black color. Okay. If it's a variable, if you Python also uses color coding. So you find variables as black, you find strings as red, you find numbers, for example, they are green or something like that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have a question on the output. Okay, go ahead. Can uh, can can you speak up? Yes. Uh, suppose you want to output a list of countries. Um, what you see on the screen on the computer is very important. So if it just shows Zambia, Osaka, Angola, Rwanda, for example. Of course, it's possible to do that. And we're going to show that. You can just output the, the list of countries or the list of capitals. Yeah, so it's possible to do that. It's coming. That's what uh, yeah, part of the. Yes. Please have an example. Yeah, there is an example coming. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this thing will be very important. Okay. So, uh, let's move on to uh, lists. Now, for you to uh, access an item in a list, uh, you have to use something called an index. An index is a value which tells you the position of item in a list. For example, first position, second position, third position. Now, for Python, the indexing starts from zero. So the first item in the list has got an index zero. The second item in the list has got an index one, and it moves like that. That is, if you're starting from, for example, if I print my fruits like this, so if I'm starting from here, from mango, so mango will have index zero, guava will have index one, uh, orange will have index two, uh, grape will have index three, like that. So this is when you start from this side, you're starting from zero, you're going this way, this is what is referred to as positive indexing. But you can also start from this particular end here. When you start from this end, your index will not start from zero, but you start from negative one. So from the last item, so the last item of index negative one, the second last item of index negative two, third last item of index negative three, like this. So with this indexing, whether you're starting positive indexing or negative indexing, it's possible for you to access items, any item in a list. 
Okay, so I'm going to show that. For example, uh, here I want to print out the first item in the list fruits. So I put, uh, say print, I put the name of the list, then inside here in square brackets, I put the index of the item I want to print out. So for index zero, that refers to the first item in the list, and I'm going to get mango. If I want to print out the third item in the list, third item is one, two, three. So basically, zero, one, two, which is orange. So I put the index two there. So I say print fruit, square brackets, two. If I do that, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get orange. If I want to print out the last item in the list, which is also orange this side, then as long as it's last, it has got negative one. Second last has got negative two. So you usually don't have a problem. You don't need to know how big a list is. As long as the last item, you just put the index negative one there. So if you do that, then you get, get your orange. If you want to print second last item, you put negative two there. Then you're going to do that. You get your cucumber. Well, that's where you start from the other the, end. Yes, that's why you can start from the other side. Then you come this side, negative one, negative two, negative three, like that. Does Python have a provision to print the uh, memory addresses? The memory addresses? Sorry? Does Python have the provision to print the memory addresses? Yes, there are certain data structures which people don't use a lot, which people don't use a lot, which actually allows Python to print the actual address of where the variable is stored. So there are certain things which like that which you can, for example, uh, zipped objects. Zipped objects are not printed out directly like this, but what you're given is an address to where that particular zipped object is. There are other things which look like lists called generators, which people don't use a lot because people have got trouble with ad memory addresses when computers is a bit higher things, so they don't, but those also, you access things using memory addresses. Remember, we created. Uh, so, sorry, Mr. Sichuan, yes. just an addition. So, um, Mr. Changwe, you obviously are aware of these Arduino processors or microcontrollers, mm -hmm. then um, the Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's Raspberry Pi with um, hardware mm -hmm. systems. You use Python to program it. Yes. And so you can access all those um, addresses and stuff we are talking about. So for the Arduino, I think C is the best language. Yes. But for, for, for Raspberry Pi, Python is the, the best uh, programming language. Okay. So with a single index, you can only access one item from a list. But maybe you want more than one item, more than like you want a list of items which are adjacent one after the other. So for you to do that, you use something called a slice. And a slice is denoted by a semicolon. Now with this slice, on the left hand of the slice, you state the index you want to start from. Say, I want to start from this particular index. On the right hand of the slice, you state the index you want to go up to but exclude. So you say, go up to this particular index, but do not include it in the values you're going to select. So basically, that's how a slice works. You have got a start index, where to start from, then uh, colon, then you state the index where the slice should go up to, but exclude that particular value from the selected list items. So if you don't, you have a slice like this in your square brackets, you have, say, fruit, square brackets, you put a slice like that. You don't state where it should start from, you don't state where it should end from, then it's going to select everything. So this is how you cleverly select everything in the list. So if you do that, as you're going to see, this is going to select everything in the list. So this is basically equivalent to you printing the whole list. But with the probability that you can now select sub lists and sort of thing. So in this particular one here, I want to start selection from the first item. This is index zero, then one, two, three here. So grep has got index three, but in this selection, grep will not be included. So I'm saying go up to, but exclude grep. Start from the first item, go up to, but exclude grep in your selection of whatever it is you're doing. So if I do that, you see, I will select mango, guava, orange, but grep is left out. That's how, this is what is referred to as a slice. So this allows you to select 
Yes, sir. Professor. No, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you do not include the start index, like I said, the selection starts from the beginning of the list. So without including the zero and me including the three, this should be equivalent to this. The result should be the same. And that's what you get. So if you're feeling lazy because you don't want to type, a, <laughs> you're feeling lazy type is zero, you can just skip it out, then you move on to the other bits. If you want to start from, for example, if you want to start from the second index, item in the second index all the way up to the end, I don't know how long this list is. I'm just saying I want to start from item with second index all the way up to the end. Then I give the start index, then I don't, I omit the end. So it will go or they will select all the way up to the end. And that's basically what you see in this particular case. Orange, grape, lemon, cucumber, orange, all the way up to the end. So it will not exclude the last item? No, no, it will select even the last item. Up Everything. to the last item? Yes, up to the last item. Then, remember we created uh, the list foods, which contains other lists. So in this particular case, for you to access items in a, in a list which contains other lists, you have to use something called subsetting. Now with subsetting, you'll be doing two things. You'll be selecting the lists. Say, I want the first list, because this food has got, has got lists in it. It has got four lists. So you say, in foods, I want to select the first list, or I want to select, select the second list, or I want to select the last list. Then, inside that list you have selected, I want to select this particular item. <coughs> so that's basically how subsetting works. So in this particular case, uh, if I say print foods with only square brackets index zero, this is going to give me this first list of fruits. This is what I get. So I only get the list of fruits. But now that if I check what to hire, what, what kind of thing is this food uh, square brackets index zero, if I check the type, it tells me this is a list. So if it is a list, then we can do the things I've done before. You can actually select an item, or you can actually select a multiple item. So basically, you can now include another pair of square brackets where you say, okay, from the list foods, which is fruits, mango, guava, whatever, I want to select the item with index one, which is the second item, which is supposed to be guava. So if I do that, I get guava. So this bit where you're using two square brackets, two pairs of square brackets, the first one is used for selecting the lists from this list of lists. The second one is used for selecting the item in this particular list. This is what is referred to as subsetting. You can do the same thing. You can select the last list in the list of foods. You're going to get this list of cereals. You can check what you have. That bit there. Then from the list of cereals, you can say, okay, I only want the first three. I want the I want the, the first three items only. So now I'm using a slice. So if I do that, I'm going to get only the first three uh, items, corn, wheat, oats, like that. So basically, this is something called subsetting. And of course, if you check what I have, it tells you this is the list. OK. Any questions on this bit? Is it clear? OK. Now, for a tuple also, for a tuple, you can use indexing. You can also use slicing. For example, our tuple prime numbers, there. If you want the first item, so you say uh, print prime numbers in square brackets. You put the index of the first item, which is 0, so it's going to give you 1. If you want the last, uh, second last item, you put a negative index there, so it's going to give you your 17 there. But you're also free to give it a slice. Because basically, as far as the tuple is concerned, a tuple is a list which you can't modify. So all the other things which work with lists, like accessing and everything, they do work with tuples. The only difference is when it comes to modification. You can't modify the items in tuple. When it comes to a set, unfortunately, sets, because of their nature, they're disorganized. There is no way to access anything in a set. So you, if you try to use your index, say SADIC, uh, let me get the first item in SADIC, then it's going to tell you, say, there's a problem. You cannot, sets are not subscribable. Basically, they don't have indices. You can't access a particular item in a set. You can't go for any 
Sorry? It can't work by default. It's no, no, it, it can't. It can't. It doesn't. If you try to use your 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 slice, say you want to select certain items in Comesa, like in this particular case, remember we also created a search code Comesa. It doesn't work. So basically, this is another difference. You can't access items in a set. You can use the set as a whole, but you can't say picky picky things to use from a set. You have to use it the way it is. Basically, the way a mathematical set is. So if, if we, we have put things in a set, yes. when we come again, we, have put, we might find something, some other range. For example, our space it might be right. It's possible. It's possible. It could be. Yeah. Any other question? So that's a distinction there. Uh, when it comes to dictionaries, you access dictionary items using a key. So you need to give the key of the dictionary. You need to know what key. But of course, if you've got a dictionary like the way we had the dictionary weekends, you can access, you need to know what are the keys. Because a dictionary might be very large. The dictionaries I've created are very small, but when we are talking about actual science data, this might be very, very large data set such that you can't just look at the whole thing. So there is a way in which you can simply look at a dictionary and extract only the keys. And this is using something called a method called key. Now a method is different from a function. Methods are special types of functions, but these functions only work with specific data structures. A function can work with any structure, but a method only works with specific data structures. And the way you go about using this method is a bit different. So you start out by typing the name of the data structure, then you put a dot, followed by a dot, then the name of the method. So this is how, if you see something like this, the name of the structure, then you put there's a dot, then some function after that, that function is a method. It's a special function which only works with that data structure. Are we clear? So with this one, method called keys, this is going to give us a list of keys associated with the dictionary weekdays. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is how you're able to extract from a dictionary only your keys. If you want to extract only the values, there's another method called values. So the naming of these things is quite intuitive. If you say keys, you know, okay, this is going to give you keys. There's another one called values here, values. So you type the name of the structure, which is weekdays, then you put a dot, then values followed by some parentheses. In this particular case, if you run this, this is going to give you a list of the values associated with the keys you extracted earlier. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, I think I've missed something? Friday. 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 I think I've missed Friday. I think I've missed Friday. So, one, two, three, four, four, five. Yeah, so I you had six. I, I had six, six huh? Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. So I missed something. If you want a, combi a list, which is a combination of your keys and values paired together, not the way we had, but in this particular case, paired a list of tuples, you can use an it a method called items. So you say week weekdays of items. So this one, you see, it's going to give you a list, but you see the first item in this list is a tuple pairing of the key one with, some, with, its, with its corresponding value something. So you can see you have a bunch of tuples inside here. These are tuples. So you have got tuples which have been put inside the list. So basically, if you want this kind of way, this is something you could use. But you can use this differently. For example, if you have coordinates, you're trying to plot some data. You have got data, you have X data and Y data. Then you have got this coordinates, you're trying to plot this data. You want to see which data is which one is going to be plotted with this. You can have your X value being paired with this corresponding Y value like this. So you use your X values numbers, your, your values as keys, then the other ones you use your Ys as the Y thing value. So you could also cleverly do something like that. Uh, if you want to access an item from a dictionary, of course, there is a way to do that. You can use your square brackets. But inside the square brackets, you need to put in the key. So inside the square brackets, you put in the key value. Yeah. So this gives me access to Sunday. That's one way of doing it. 
The other way of doing it is you can use a, me a method called get. So week weekdays dot get. Then inside the parentheses you put in the key you want to access. In this particular case, I want to access the value associated with the key three. It's going to give me Tuesday. There's another way you can do it where you use a function a method called set default. You put in the value five. Um, you do that. The operation you have carried out here are the same, especially with get and set default. You might ask what's the difference. The difference is that with get, get only allows you to access a value. You give it a key, access a value. With set default, if you give it a key and that key exists in that dictionary, then it will give you the value associated with that key. But if that key does not exist, then set default will ask you to give it a value. So you put give it a value and a key, then you can use set default to add a new key value pair to your dictionary. So basically now this is you adding something to your dictionary. So you can also use set default for that particular bit there. The length of, an, of these data structures, you can you find the length of a data structure using a function called length. Now this is a function. As you are going to see, a Python function accepts different type of things. A method only works for a specific data structure. And you have to say the name of the data structure, you put a dot, then the name of the method. For a function, you simply say the name of the function in the parentheses, you put in the data structure, and that's how it works. For example, how, how many items does the list fruit does have? So I say length, then I give it fruits, the data structure fruit. It will tell me there are seven items there. How about food? Food is a list of lists. It will tell me there are four lists in foods. How about prime numbers? Prime numbers, how many items are in prime numbers? It tells me there are 10 items. When it comes to Sadiq, how many items does say Sadiq have? Say Sadiq has about 15 members. When it comes to weekdays, we know in this particular case, this is where we're going to see that we made a mistake. We have six instead of seven. Yeah, so basically, you can see from there that this particular weekday thing, so the key pair values we're supposed to have, they're actually six instead of seven. Any questions? Which one? So that you have seven. I would need to change things, yeah, if I need to do that. I would need to actually modify that bit. Let me just uh, comment. Uh, so Python uh, appears to be a sort of object-oriented. It is object-oriented. Actually, the question has always been, with uh, computer science people, the question has always been to say, is it possible for you to start teaching structured programming and object-oriented programming at the same time? Which one should you start with? Structured programming or object-oriented programming? As you can see from last week, last week most of what I did was simply structured programming. This week I moved to object-oriented programming and people are understanding. So it's actually possible for you to mix things up. So yes, it's very object-oriented programming, very object-oriented and the structured programming there. So you can mix up and m mesh to what your own evil plans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. There's got it, uh, there is all sorts of li libraries to this whole thing. For this series of lectures, our focus is only to highlight the actual actual language. I think later on in future we'll be able to also create another series of lectures where you're using Python for specific applications. Yes, Professor. But fifteen in the study countries. Does it include the double double countries you are in <laughs> So in the Sadiq countries, uh, this is a set. So for a set, an item only appears once. So if Zambia was appearing four times, so all those four four instances have been squashed only to one instance. Yes. So if it was at least then you do have been <laughs> Yes, you do have been so maybe just a quick one. We are at 52 minutes yes. past um, 10. I don't know how... Um, I think maybe let us finish it here. From here, next week, isn't it? Is that okay? Mr. Sicho? Some people um, may have crossed at the other end. Yes. Uh, so, so we start with the two point five in the next class. Is that yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We yeah, can fine. we can make yeah, a continuation. I think it's more practical if we make a continuation. Yeah. So that yeah, it's more practical. It's so maybe two more minutes of questions. Uh, 
any question, any comment? Okay, so I have one. Um, okay. There is where we were accessing, I would say, um, variables using slice. Okay. Yes, slice, yes, yes. Slice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you have taught us a way of accessing things using positive nature and yeah, negative, negative yes, nature. Yes. What happens when you combine? You can actually combine them. The you can say you, you can there. say I want to start from what the I, second I, I, I mean yes. Maybe if I give an example would be maybe here it doesn't show many things. So what so maybe we have a number two and the end maybe being minus one. Yes. I'm, I'm just thinking. So how would this come out for any particular So here. So I'll start with uh, print uh, fruits. Then let's start with two, for example. I want to start with uh, the third item let's, the second item. Then I want to go up to but exclude the second last item. So I'll say negative two. I can do that. So if I do that, then I run this. That's what I get. So it starts from the second, because if, if you look at the printout for everything, this is, a, this is everything, right? So if I have index one here, which is the second item. So I'm starting from Guava. I'm going all the way up to, but exclude the second item all the way up to but exclude the okay. second item in the list. So the second item in the list is the cucumber. So I'm going all the way up to but exclude the second. So I only end up with guava, orange, grape, up to lemon, and that's what we have. This is what is referred to as mixed indexing, where you mix your positive indexes and your negative indices together. It's very, very efficient. Okay, with that we will come to an end for today. We can reflect on these things if we have questions since we are continuing with data structures next week. Uh, you are welcome to, to ask. Otherwise, you have a good day, but for our um, outreach program, for those who have nothing to do with physics department outreach program, maybe you may proceed. We have um, we have an outreach program at 13 hours today to international school Saka companies and uh, organizations of whatever sort are presenting to keep you there. So they invite